Oki. Ita Mexkanatani. Good morning. It is somewhere around 10 o'clock in the a.m. on Wednesday, the 22nd of March, 2023. And we are entering into the lunar cycle Sa'aki some when the geese have their, when the waterfowl start laying their eggs, particularly the geese, some of the mallards too by the end of the moon. But we're about two weeks out from egg laying and I am seeing out here the behaviors that I would expect to see this time of year, um, especially the geese who are positioning themselves, goose couples, oddly positioning themselves in high spots. If we see any of that this morning, I'll show you. It's a really strange behavior. I don't understand what they're doing, whether they're showing themselves as a couple, whether they're scanning the territories, what it is that they do, but goose couples go and, st and stand for extended periods on high spots in the areas where they're gonna nest. I also noticed this morning a very large nest in a tree on the other side of the river, big enough to be a potential eagle nest. So I'm going to be watching that um, as we proceed. Most people who have owls at their sites who I know, at uh, their study sites who I know, are, are saying that the owls have been sitting in their nests as expected during the last moon. I never did find an owl nest, but we are moving on. Sa'aki some the duck moon and I'm out here this morning um, you know to take a look around see what's happening but also to collect my camera traps from the two experiments that I'm doing out here if you have been watching my videos you'll know I've got a camera set up out here with carrots and bananas that has been here uh, just shy of a week now so we're gonna see if anybody was interested in any of those I have another camera in another part of the forest with, uh, what are they, turkey nuggets and fries. <laughs> so we'll see if anybody was interested in those. Other than that, just taking a look at what's happening, um, the changes in, in waterfowl behavior, as I said, and the new um, migrants that are coming in from the south. Um, and then I've got some personal updates and especially about my business that I want to share later on in the day. But right now, we're just going to check out the Wilderness Park. All right, come to the scene of the first experiment. It's the camera trap aimed at the goods. And to my surprise, it doesn't look like these fruits and vegetables have been touched at all. They've just been very winterized. <laughs> yeah, black bananas and not too good looking carrots. So, I guess nobody was interested in them. I mean, we'll see. We'll look at what's on the camera. I'm gonna stop the recording on it right now. We'll look what's on there when we get home. And, um, find out whether anybody even paid any attention to that stuff or not certainly they didn't decide to uh, go to town eating it all right making our way downstream toward the other experiment This couple is not exactly on high, but they're definitely doing that thing. They've got a spot. They're claiming it. They're standing, they're watching. <laughs> That's a high point in a way, but 
they're better examples. We'll see them right on the coolie edges and stuff, I'm sure. Almost to where I've got that other camera trap in here. Some of these deer don't even know that I'm here. These guys do. They moved, they shuffled over that way. But he, I think this one's just, just understanding. Oh shit, there's somebody there. Uh, not even concerned, I'm surprised. Let's see. Where did I put that camera trap? All right. These guys are letting me get so close. Maybe I can get an eye on what it is they are rooting up and eating. I'm shocked that they are uh, still standing right here. Oh, these are muleys though. So I shouldn't, shouldn't be so shocked. The black tails are never as spooky as the uh, white tails. Good number of them here though. Nice little herd in here. Alright, I'm going to try to find my camera. Alright, here is our second camera trap. Down in this hollow with flotsam flood debris. And aimed at the experiment with turkey nuggets and fries. And it appears almost all of the turkey nuggets are gone. There's still one. And what, could, what else can I tell here? It looks like there's some little uh, mouse poops. I don't know if you can see those. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's see. What is that? I uh, can't really tell. Might not be anything. Anyway, something came and ate the nuggets. My guess is going to be that it was uh, magpies. <laughs> That's my best guess. But we'll get maybe get lucky and there'd been a, a raven or something paid attention or a coyote saw the magpies come in and came out. We'll see what, what uh, reveals itself on the video. But yeah test number two and clearly um, the random vegetable thing is not going well you know they're not so into nobody seems to be very into the random vegetables um, so I don't know we'll have to try some other try some other stuff I want to find the best porcupine lure so that's what I'm going for Maybe a salt lick would be a good idea. I don't know. But we're going to try something else. We'll do more experiments. Just picking these up for today and we'll see what's on them. The deer just came running past me. There's a coyote.
Yeah, the deer on the run. But I see, I seen the coyote trotting along, following them this way. Dang, I wish I'd have caught that coyote on camera. I don't think I did. Look at how these deer are now. Just standing nice out in the open where they can make a run for it. If they're chased, they're pursued. I wish I'd have caught that coyote running, man. That was cool. Just looked like a wolf chasing those deer. I knew something was up when all the deer started running past me. <laughs> Didn't uh, much frighten these geese. But I'm sure they're aware that something's up over here. Wonder how far off they ran. It's probably not worth pursuing, but... Couldn't help but come take a peek what's going on on this far downstream end. Not a lot of activity, but there is that goal, and I hear somewhere out this way, I'm hearing the uh, calls of widgeons, but I don't know where they're at. No eagles. I think the eagles have mostly gone off to nest. Now that's what I'm talking about. Look at these guys. They picked the highest point in the whole place. Every year I see this behavior. Pre-nesting. Every year I wonder what it is. Is it new couples announcing themselves, showing off? Is it old couples doing something? Are they scanning the territory, trying to choose nesting sites? What are they up to? It's not like they nest in these places, but they, they definitely do this like stakeout thing. I don't know. Any case, I am headed home up the trail here and I do want to give some updates on things at home. Uh, like I said, especially my business. And in that respect, I really have to express my gratitude for all you guys uh, who watch my videos or follow my social media and who backed me up. Um, I put out a couple of Facebook ads uh, announcing that I would be offering dog walking and dog sitting uh, services. My first ad I got, which I put out like a month ago, I got zinged pretty bad by the public. I don't know, there was just some people, just some like people that kept hammering and badgering me about how my price is too high or this and that. And um, I fought, I ended up fighting with them online and getting reported to Facebook for uh, community guidelines issues. And I was in Facebook jail for a day, like total jail for a day. And then my account though um, had limited visibility to others for like 21 days or something. It was, it was retarded. But as soon as that ended, I put out another ad. This new ad had some trolls as well. 
come at it, but um, I didn't let them get to me as before. And I had a lot of people that just paid attention to the ad um, and that started recommending me uh, or, or calling me um, to find out more about the services. Some of them recommended me to others. Um, some of them actually, you know, wanted services for their own pets. And so since then, um, well, I've, I've been inundated the last few days with, with calls. In fact, um, my weekend is so booked up with animals that I, I had to turn people away already for the coming weekend. So, um, right now, you know, I just got, uh, Polly and Lucy at the house, plus Jenny, the Dalmatian that we've had, uh, we've been taking care of since the first ad is still with us and probably has another week with us. Uh, today I'm getting in about an hour, I'm getting a, uh, a St. Bernard, a 10 month old male St. Bernard. So this should be a big dog, should be a fun time. Um, I'll have him for five nights and then on Saturday afternoon I get a pair of dogs dropped off they're just staying one night they'll be picked up Sunday evening um, I have two dog walking appointments today I, I'm trying to stack my Monday Wednesday Saturday with dog walks and uh, do that during the days and yeah I think um, it certainly seems like this could become a viable business for me to where uh, it'll it'll replace that office income that I had that I don't like <laughs> working in the office you know it just isn't a good match for me so I, I have some high hopes now seeing the uh, that I have to turn people away already you know this weekend and Things are going well otherwise, you know, with me and Britt. Um, life feels pretty good right now. Feels pretty good. Feels like might be able to, uh, you know, by if I just work through the summer and develop a client base with the animal pet care on top of the wildlife uh, relocation business, then I might be good to go. And I just... Uh, who wouldn't love to be their own own boss and be making their own money and you know I don't get health care and such which would be nice but <laughs> I don't know I really feel like a lot of people take advantage of public funds you know there's a lot of people out there making like my previous boss uh, from Medicine Hat who's making you know who knows hundred thousand plus a year uh, that are public funds um, and <laughs> on top of you know taking travels and per diems and these kind of things mileage um, and there's so many of those people out there you know and being in those kind of positions which I was the whole time I was in education you know I was operating off of of course public funds for the most part, you know, and uh, and it's nice to have that security, to have all the health care, to have all the travel options, you know, to have vacation, um, all that stuff. But it feels like you don't really earn it, you know. <laughs> I kind of enjoy earning my money. I kind of enjoy uh, doing my own thing. I've always I've always had to have my creative control um, even if I'm employed for somebody else and that's you know that's led me into uh, having issues with long-term employment so better I do my own thing and it's nice to see that uh, it, it may be possible and especially so because of the people that support me um, on social media so <laughs> I'm really grateful you guys and uh, you know it seems like anytime something's happened in my life and I really need help and there's a way you guys can help you guys do and it uh, it has saved my ass several times and 
I, I'm, I'm just totally grateful. Anyway, I'm gonna go home. Um, St. Bernard is on his way in the next hour. And then at some point, we'll see what's on those camera traps. Jenny, no barking allowed. You guys could just hang out back here without barking. Come on. Come on. Polly's not barking. Check it out. What I thought was going to be a, a 10 month old St. Bernard is just a puppy 10 weeks old. Capone. So he's going to be with us five nights. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. The Lucy. Yeah. Lots of pretty guests here. Capone and Jenny. So, yeah, this, um, and we're going to go take a, 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 a couple of dog walks in a bit here. I'm right now going through the footage from the coolie to see uh, what's visited the camera. Hey, I said no barky. <laughs> Haven't seen nothing yet though. Lots of lots of video, lots of nothing on the video. I don't know why that camera takes so much video um, without wildlife in it, but any case, going through all of that, we'll go walk some more dogs later, but uh, for certain, uh, this business of pet sitting and pet services and stuff is is gonna add significantly to my revenue if it's gonna go like this hey so early in that I have a good amount of business and stuff coming um, I wonder how it will be in winter compared to you know we're kind of headed into the nice months and people are gonna be traveling outside and it's pretty you know um, so I don't know if that's just lending to people needing dog sitting right now, and that's going to probably continue through the summer, but I don't know how the, how the business is in the winter, and that's what I really need. But in any case, right now, it's pretty perfect. So this is Riker, one of my two dog walking clients that I've got now. And Riker needs leash training. And uh, the dog that I was walking whoop, earlier, um, Sid, my other client, needs to lose weight. So with Sid, I do a little bit of running and with uh, Riker here, I just do walking and some leash training. And Ryan needs some dog training training. <laughs> so I could do better at this kind of thing um, and really offer services to, to help dogs uh, learn things in ways probably better than I normally teach them. I mean, I don't have any, any real dog coaching education other than living with dogs my whole life and uh, <laughs> this guy will get better right now he's he's very like pulling the walk he's um, you know easily distracted doesn't do well when we come across other dogs and stuff to socialize no don't be getting wet today last uh, first time I walked him which was the last time I walked him um, just got soaked. <laughs> there was a lot of puddles and he's so low to the ground, his tail just drags. So he got a lot of wet on the undercarriage and had to have a bath as soon as he went home. And nobody wants to have to give their 
dog a bath every time after uh, hiring the dog walker, you know? Let's see, where, where should we go? I think we should cross the street here, Riker. I'm not exactly uh, sure where in the neighborhood we are at at the moment. Any case, I did review. Come on, let's cross the street. Yeah, there's a, so he gets distracted. So he sees another person. Come on, Riker. Let's go. You don't need to be worried about anybody else but but me and you and our walk. <laughs> I'll let you smell something because I want to talk. Any case. I uh, did review the video from the two camera traps and we'll start with the carrots and bananas um, that had really just some deer pass by nobody really paid any attention to it which is not surprising we didn't have any nibbles or anything out of the fruit and vegetable um, so it's about what I thought nothing nothing of any significance there was a deer that kind of took a good sniff nearby or passed by, but that's about it. Um, the other one, <laughs> where I had my more expensive camera, by the way, that camera is right glitching out. Remember, uh, it was having those problems where it would just show a couple seconds of light in the, in the uh, nighttime vision and then click out. I thought it was a temperature issue, but it's still doing that. Uh, this last little while it's still do hey Riker come on yeah still doing that this last little while and Riker come this way and uh, and not only that but it's taking so many video clips it ran out of batteries three days in because it had taken over 2,000 video clips um, it's obviously being triggered when there's nothing there to trigger it and I thought maybe it was like uh, connecting it to Saskatoon bushes and stuff and have it sway in the wind that was making that happen before but um, I secured it to a really steady tree this time it wasn't gonna be swaying anywhere and I still got thousands of clips so I didn't go through all of them Obviously, the nighttime ones, it was worthless to go through because they were black. The daytime ones, I could kind of see in the thumbnail whether there was a... Uh, uh, we got to watch out for these puddles. Let's not get into puddles. Let's try to go around them. It's pretty tough when you got, like, puddles everywhere. But, um, any case, there I could kind of see in the thumbnails whether there was anybody visiting and... Uh, it, one morning, I think the second morning, or the first mo the first morning after the first night, um, there was a raccoon who came by, and he looked like he ate. He stayed and ate chicken nuggets for or turkey nuggets for a while, so he probably got the most of them. And then he noticed the camera. He did this really funny kind of side shuffle to get out of there. <laughs> Oh, I hope you're not getting too wet, little guy. Let's go. Come on, Riker. Yeah, I know you're scared. Stay out of puddles. Come. Come, come. Whoa, this guy. He's going to be wet again. Let me see you. Let me see you, Riker. Come, come. Let me see. Let me see how wet you are. Oh, you're so wet still. Fuck. Damn. All right. It's just really tough to avoid puddles. I might have to dry him off something in my truck or something before I uh, take him back. <laughs> they specifically asked me today not to get him so wet that he'll need a bath, but he's kind of getting that way. It's just the conditions. I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna call it. A, I'm gonna call that a video, and that's my update. Um, Get back to it in a day or two or three or something.